Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Altium Academy. I am Zach Peterson, your local technical consultant for Altium. And today we are going to talk a little bit about impedance calculators and some of these impedance calculator applications that you see all over the Internet. Now, if you've ever Googled something like microstrip impedance calculator or differential impedance calculator, you're going to be you're, you're going to be able to find a whole bunch of different results out there on the Internet. All of these different calculators, they're based on a small number of equations. Some of them give you different results than others. And I think it's important for designers to know what these differences actually are and why they arise and really how to best interpret the results from these different calculators. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get into it. Okay, everybody, so what are we talking about today? Well, we're going to be talking about impedance calculators. Now, if you've ever gone on the internet, maybe gone on to Google and started looking for an impedance calculator, you'll actually find a lot of different results uh, on the first page of Google for different impedance calculators. It almost seems like, uh, you know, every online publication or, uh, you know, every just even individual designers out there will post these impedance calculators on their pages. And they're free to access, they're free to use, they, they give you some results. Um, sometimes if you start comparing different impedance calculators, you'll actually see that the results can be quite different. It just depends on what values you put into these different impedance calculators. Some of these impedance calculators won't tell you which actual formulas they're using. And uh, sometimes you actually can't be sure that the impedance uh, calculators are adhering to some specific approximations that need to be applied in the calculator or in the formula that they're using in the calculator. Generally, these uh, impedance calculators that you find online uh, they are not field solvers. They're actually using an analytical formula. So what that means is that they're actually using a formula that you could like, you know, plug in numbers to and just work it all out by hand or like with, you know, your calculator on your phone or you could write in, you know, you could build an Excel sheet that actually calculates all this stuff for you. So it is possible for you to go and build your own impedance calculator. So what I went ahead and did was I actually created a differential microstrip impedance calculator and it's posted on the Altium blog right now. Anybody can go on to the blog and start playing around with this for free. And um, like I said, you just play with it, play around with it. Start plugging in some numbers and see if you get some results that make sense. And what this is going to give you is it's going to give you the odd mode impedance. So we've talked about what this is uh, previously and the differential impedance. So this is for micro strips. Um, I also created one for strip lines. So we have a strip line calculator here, and um, this is also gonna give you the odd mode and the differential mode impedance. Some of these calculator applications, if you're looking online for, uh, for like a differential impedance calculator, what they'll actually give you is an edge coupled impedance calculator. Um, really, it's the same thing. This is just driving in the differential mode, so it's gonna give you the different differential mode impedance. Um, those other calculators will give you the common mode impedance as well as the even mode impedance. So that's just the you know even driving analog for a differential uh, for a differential interconnect. So that's what those uh, those other applications are going to give you. So how do these things work? That's a fair question because like I said, some of these will actually show what the formulas are that are being used in the background in these calculators. Some of them won't. Sometimes you won't actually realize that two different calculators are using the same formulas unless you compare them side by side with the same numbers. Some of them will allow you to enter a frequency, but they won't really tell you how they're using it or if they're even using it at all. Some of them will give you a propagation constant. Some of them won't. So these are all things to consider uh, when you're actually getting a different or when you're uh, looking for a differential impedance calculator and, and starting to use one. So um, I think what I'll do, you know, in the coming weeks is I'll actually modify these so that they do have a propagation constant that gets calculated. Um, so I think that'll be kind of fun. And I'll at some point I'll make some single-ended uh, calculators as well. But I decided to make these calculators because, um, as we'll see momentarily, uh, the formulas that get implemented in the background can actually be kind of complex. So, you know, this looks like a really simple situation, um, but there are approximate formulas that are a you know, pretty complex and uh, that need to be programmed into the background. If you're looking at just like a regular single-ended uh, impedance calculator, what's going on here? What formulas are they using? 
Well, these are the different sets of, of possible formulas that they will use. So uh, here I'm just showing the impedance formulas for microstrips. Um, here we have the IPC standard formula. Now this formula is known to be inaccurate at high frequencies. Um, so it, it is known to, uh, to misestimate the impedance um, at, at high frequencies. Um, a more accurate set of equations and still yet a more complex set of equations are actually Waddle's equations as shown right here in this lower half of the slide. Um, so there is an effective dielectric constant that determines the signal propagation speed. That effective dielectric constant depends on the ratio of the trace width to the trace distance to its reference plane. So depending on the value of the trace width compared to the reference plane, you'll have these two possible values for the effective dielectric constant. Um, here, this effective dielectric constant doesn't appear in the actual impedance formula. Um, there is a kind of a variation, though, here of the impedance uh, or of the uh, uh, of the dielectric constant that appears here in this equation. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, in general, you know, scaling the dielectric constant does kind of give you the expected change uh, in in impedance. So meaning, if you you know quadruple, let's say, uh, the dielectric constant, um, you get approximately a square root reduction in the impedance, or, you know, about a, about a half. Similarly, for strip lines, single-ended strip lines, these are some of the possible formulas that get used in these impedance calculators for strip lines. On the top side, we have IPC formulas. Uh, on the bottom side, uh, we have Waddle's equations. And Waddle's equations here also uh, quite a bit more complex, uh, but uh, these, these values are also known to be, uh, or the values that you get from these equations are actually known to be quite a bit more accurate. The impedance calculators that you find online, they'll implement one of these two possible sets of formulas. Typically, the, the simplest ones will implement the top half, uh, the more complex ones that are working in the background uh, will uh, implement the bottom half. But, you know, regardless, they're still both going to give you an impedance value. There's also a set of kind of standard values for uh, differential microstrips and strip lines. And then there's also a set of formulas for differential uh, microstrips and strip lines from Waddle's equations. Now, once you get to the differential case with Waddle's equations, I mean, oh man, they get complex quick. So let me just show you here. I'm inside of Waddle's textbook right now, and um, I'm just kind of scrolling down the page. So let's see if we can find the results here for... Uh, here we have uh, coplanar microstrips. Uh, here we have... So here we go. We have edge-coupled uh, microstrip lines. So here you could get either the even or the odd mode uh, impedance from these lines. Now, you might look at this and say, Okay, this looks pretty simple, right? The problem is there are all these different parameters that go into these formulas in order to give you either the, the, the even or the odd mode uh, impedance for this pair of microstrips, uh, whether, depending on whether it's differential or a, a common mode driving. And if I just go to the next page, I mean, oh man, look at all of the different pieces that go into this calculation. So it makes sense why you would want to have a little calculator application to help you get the impedance. And I mean, we're, we're two pages, actually here it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages worth of formulas. I mean, seven pages worth of, you know, parameters just to be able to use uh, these two formulas right here to try and get the even and the odd mode impedance for this uh, edge coupled microstrip lines. Um, same thing goes for uh, like if we have asymmetric coupled lines. So asymmetric coupled lines where one where the widths are mismatched, they can also have uh, an even or odd mode driving impedance. Uh, if we keep going uh, here, actually we have a good example here where we have two different dielectrics. So we have an asymmetric, uh, and this actually wouldn't be a microstrip line, but this would be a strip line. So asymmetric strip line. Um, and we can just keep going through this textbook. So this is a great textbook to kind of get all of these different possible uh, microstrip uh, or strip line or any other type of uh, transmission line uh, impedance formulas. Uh, as as well as uh, propagation and and uh, propagation constant and effective. Uh,
effective dielectric constant formulas. So there's a ton of stuff in here. Um, you'll notice I'm on page 200 here. Um, this is a really large book and uh, it's just full of information. But you can see how complex some of these formulas are and so it makes sense that we would want to have a calculator application. These uh, formulas, while they get you, you know, reasonably accurate results, they have something missing. And really all of the impedance calculators that you're going to find online all have something missing from them. So what is it that's actually missing from these, uh, these formulas? So first thing, if we look at what's missing, so losses, losses are missing. And the reason for that is because if we just go back to these calculators here, we're entering a dielectric constant, but this is expecting a real number for the dielectric constant. So there's a video that I just made about the dissipation factor, which relates to the imaginary part of the dielectric constant. And it is that imaginary part of the dielectric constant that produces dielectric losses. So there are multiple sources of loss in, uh, in, in a transmission line. So there's dielectric losses, so that's the imaginary portion of, uh, we'll just call it DK, but the imaginary portion of the dielectric constant. And there's copper losses, right? So that's, uh, that's roughness as well as skin effect. The two really go together, okay? And then there is radiation losses. Radiation losses do matter, especially when you're dealing with microstrips. So all of these loss mechanisms are totally absent from any of these calculators. Now, I do have some videos on my channel where I talk about taking lossless models, like the stuff that you see here in Waddle's equations, and adding the losses back into it to get a more realistic approximation for a transmission line. And so um, I'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to keep updating these calculator applications so that you can get that information. Um, so just you know keep your eyes locked on uh, these blogs and on these tools because I'll keep updating these as you know as time goes on. But looking here at uh, at what's missing, right? We've covered all the different loss mechanisms, but what else is missing? So another important point here is missing, and that is dispersion. So dispersion refers to the tendency for the dielectric constant to change as a function of frequency. Now, um, dispersion is the same reason that when you put white light into a prism, the prism splits that light into different colors. And that's why you get, you know, the different red, you know, red, green, blue uh, colors coming out of the side of a prism when you hold the prism at an angle with respect to light, to, to white light. So that's what dispersion is. And dispersion really occurs in every single material. There is no material that doesn't have uh, some level of dispersion at some frequency range. So uh, dispersion uh, also occurs in PCB substrates. What that means is if you put in a value for, let's say, uh, the dielectric constant at, you know, I don't know, 100 megahertz, let's say. You, you go to one of these applications, you put in the dielectric constant at 100 megahertz. Um, it's not going to be the same dielectric constant at 1 gigahertz or at 100 gigahertz or any other frequency. It, it may be slightly different. And the same applies to the losses. So losses are dispersive too meaning that the loss also depends on frequency. So calculator applications can't really account for that because first of all, you're not actually putting in the losses. So remember, you know, this dielectric constant, whatever value gets put in here, this is just a real number. You can see right here as I kind of toggle through, it's just real number. Um, you can actually do by hand, you know, a, a, dial, a complex dielectric constant. And that's actually one of the updates I'll probably have to apply to these different calculator applications. So you can do a complex dielectric constant um, in these formulas and it'll give you a complex imp impedance and it'll be reasonably accurate. Um, it's just missing other stuff in these formulas as well. Dispersion is also important because losses, especially copper losses, are also frequency dependent. So what that means is that the roughness and skin effect losses that you have at 100 megahertz are not going to be the same as at 1 gigahertz, even if the dielectric portion doesn't change over frequency. So that's another reason that a lot of calculator applications are going to give you wrong values, especially when you get to higher frequencies. So 
How do you solve this problem? What do you do instead of using one of these calculator applications that might not be totally accurate? Well, you have to use a method that can essentially rebuild a dispersive lossy model from one of these sets of formulas, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's Waddle's equations or whether it's a lossless model you get from a field solver, or you need to use a program that has a field solver built into it that can account for as much of this stuff as possible. Um, one of the things that we also didn't account for in here, and I'm just going to add it in, is fiber weave. And this is actually something where software tools are now are just now trying starting to hit market where you can account for fiber weave uh, statistically. So this is important because you know really when you're routing a trace over a board, you actually don't really know whether it's going to be entering an area where there is excessive resin compared to glass and that creates variations in the dielectric constant that then modifies a signal behavior as it travels. That's another thing that really all of these applications can't take account of and so to deal with that you have to actually take a statistical approach to figure out what's your best and worst case design uh, that you can get in terms of skew and uh, in terms of uh, radiation and impedance variations. So all of those things have to be approach statistically. The other thing that you can do though in, in programs like Altium Designer, programs like I believe in Polar, uh, and then in, in uh, other ECAD applications is they actually do their best to really account for all of this stuff. So uh, the dielectric losses and the copper losses, radiation losses they can't totally account for, um, dispersion they can do with, uh, with wideband to buy model. So they really do their best to try and uh, account for all of this stuff in the models that they use that are built into those calculator applications in your PCB design software. Does that mean you should never use these online calculator applications? Not necessarily. Uh, online calculator applications are good for getting just like an estimate. You can get a rough estimate, okay? Um, you might be off by 5%, you might be off by 10%. You know, it's obviously it's kind of hard to say and I can't tell you specifically what percentage all of these different uh, values are going to be off by because that's really going to depend on a number of factors that I've outlined here. Uh, however, they're great for getting an estimate and then taking that into your PCB design software. Then you go into your PCB design software, build your stack up, figure out what the impedance is, and then you start doing the design. So hopefully that helps uh, illustrate what goes on in these different calculator applications. And uh, you can kind of take that knowledge and go forward and maybe understand a little bit better what's going on in the background with these calculators. All right, everybody, thanks for checking out this video. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more of these videos, hit that subscribe button. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. And before you start playing around with impedance calculators, definitely don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.